Hello and welcome. This is Patty Bennett. I blog at pattystamps.com and today I have such a cute little project to show you. Look at these adorable little castles, complete with the brick wall and the little gal at the top and the knight in shining armor coming to rescue her, the door, the dragons. Oh my gosh, how fun is this? I love these. And what's really cool is that they just fold flat and they fit perfectly within a regular size envelope. Isn't that fun? So cute, so cute. I got this terrific idea from a demonstrator named Barbara Smith. She's in Australia. I had to write it down so that I wouldn't forget. And this was her project. I've got, made mine just a little bit different. And she had terrific instructions and dimensions. So I asked her if I could go ahead and do a video and share this with you. I will have these dimensions and instructions on my blog at pattystamps.com. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can click the link below that will go right to that blog post so that you can get this information. But basically, all that you're using is a strip of cardstock, and I have basic gray, and it is 10 and a half inches by 3 inches. So it's just really easy to cut and we are going to score it and emboss it and embellish it and let me show you how easy it is to make these adorable little castles. I have my stamp and trimmer and I've pulled the arm out over here on the left side so that it extends all the way out there to 15 inches but I just need to put my cardstock at 10 so I've got it marked at the 10 over here. That's the first score mark. Now remember, on this cutter, this trimmer, the light colored one is for scoring, the dark one is for cutting. We're not gonna cut, so I'm just gonna move that one out of the way just so I don't make a mistake. So the first score mark is at 10, the next one is at seven and a half, the next one is at five. And the next one is at two and a half. So you're basically just scoring it every two and a half inches, plus you have that half inch mark over here. I decided on mine that I would do some embossing. So this is an embossing folder. And before I embossed it, I found that it was much easier to go ahead and bend on all of those score marks just so that I had a reference point and so that it was easy to have them bent. And then I took the embossing folder, and this is called Brick Wall, and I had to do it half at a time because this obviously is larger than the embossing folder. So what I did first was that middle score mark here, I just put it at the edge of the embossing folder and I lined it up so that the bricks would be an even amount in there. And I put it through the big shot and I got this. So just half of it is embossed. And then, I took the same folder and I put it in this way so that it's in the same spot here so that the mortar lines line up and then you get this. And the fact that I already had it scored, you can see how nicely that I've got those score marks already in there and just ready to fold this up. So before we put any adhesive on it, let's go ahead and do some sponging. Can you see the sponging there on the bricks? Do you see how it sort of helps define the edge of the, well, bricks or concrete blocks or chiseled stone or whatever it was they used back then, right? <laughs> I selected to do smoky slate and I just rubbed in circles with a sponge, and this is just a quarter of a sponge. 
And you can see, I'll show you the difference here. So look at the difference between the sponged side and the non-sponged side. It really makes a difference. So you would go ahead and sponge the whole thing. And then, I did this a little bit differently than Barbara did. I was trying to think of a really quick way to make these cute little turret things at the top. Or, I don't even know, I guess they're called that. <laughs> what are they called? So I took this punch, there, there you can see it, and I made those little notches. This is called the classic label punch. What I did is that I folded on one of the score lines and I put this in about half an inch in from the edge and I put it so that the point was going right down in there to that first line of mortar and then you can see that that will give you two of them. So then you fold at the next fold and you do the same thing. So you go in about half an inch or so. This isn't you know, rocket science. It can be kind of wherever you want it to be. Okay, so you can see how we're taking shape there. And then we just need two more, so let's see if I can get it to go in far enough on there, so I want it right about there. And so now we have two of those on each of the four wall sections. Isn't that easy? That's kind of fun. And then I decided also, once those were notched, I took my sponge and I kind of gave those a little extra ink as well. And you know what? I think I might have misspoken. This is smoky slate cardstock. I think I might have said basic gray. This is smoky slate. And of course, you could use whatever color cardstock works best for you. You don't have to use the one that I have chosen. Then I am taking my tear and tape. And if you want to do a couple rows, that's what I did. And I find that it's easiest to use my, oops, I have a little rogue something on there. So I like to use my paper piercer to pull off, there we go, to pull off the paper. It's just a little easier than kind of picking at it. Sometimes that's frustrating. So you just want to push it on there and then pull up. And then if you just fold this under, all you have to do is close that. And it's much easier than trying to like line it up up in the air and push and all that. So then you get a perfect little castle. Oh my gosh, how fun is this? So cute. So since this side got sponged, let me just put a little more ink on there so that I can finish this side up for you. So then I took some of the wood texture paper and it's so it's all different colors of wood and I die cut with the oval, the layering ovals and that's what I used for the door so you can see that. And then do you see this fun hardware on here? I used these hardware pieces from the sliding door or otherwise known as the barn door. And I just used a piece of the wood texture paper. You can see I cut a bunch of them. So it's those three pieces. This one is the handle. Those two become the hinges. So do you see that? and I added that to it. I just thought that was kind of a fun little addition that helped it really look really kind of unique. And then I used my Stampin' Dimensionals on the back of my knight and put my knight there. Then a little tip about this gal. Now, these are actually mermaids in the Myths and Magic suite. So here they are, mermaids, but for this castle, if you tuck that behind and you just sort of leave, might have to trim this a little bit, but if you leave her arms and her body 
showing and her well of course her face and her hair like I did with these then it just sort of looks like she's the princess up there in the castle needing to be um, rescued so you can just tack that in the back you can see that I just have part of her body back there on the inside and then you would die cut some of your uh, excuse me not die cut you would cut some of your dragons to go ahead and put on to the castle. One quick tip, can you see how the edge of this dragon is actually kind of gray and it blends into the castle? So what I did was took my light smoky slate stamp and blend marker and I colored around the edge so that I didn't have that stark white paper. You can see the difference there. And I liked that how that came out. I didn't think of it in the beginning when I started making this, but I did that one that way. So the dragons and the knights are on a piece of paper that look like this, and you can see that I've whoops, just cut some of those out to use on this paper. And I think this is actually my last piece, so I'm going to have to get another pack. But the Myths and Magic Suite is really cute and perfect for making an adorable little project like this. And I love, like I said, that you can just fold it flat and put it right into an envelope. One thing that Barbara did, and her instructions will include this, is she made an extra little piece, and you can kind of see that it goes across on the middle, on the inside, and she used that to attach this little flag. And as long as you keep that dimension small enough to fit into an envelope, it will still fit. But it can't stick up too awfully far. So that would go across in the center, that extra piece. And that is something that you could do, or you can just do it this way and not put the extra piece in. doesn't matter. Isn't that fun? Hope you enjoyed that. Hope you enjoyed all those little tips. If you loved the video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up or leave me a comment. And visit me at pattystamps.com anytime. Thanks. Bye.